Hi, my name is Drayson, and I'm a Chig tutor who specializes in psychology as well as some other areas like statistics. And today I want to talk about long-term potentiation, or LTP for short. Now LTP is sort of this understanding that neurons that fire together, wire together. And this may be a phrase that you've heard before, it's fairly popular. And it's this idea that neurons that fire together, so that you have one neuron that leads to the activation of another neuron, the more often those two activate so basically in sync, so that the one is followed right after by the other, uh, the connection between them gets stronger so that they are more likely to fire together and this can lead to a long chain of neurons that fire very easily. So there's a strong pathway of neurons uh, and this has implications for things like memory. So the more often we work at a scale, the more often these neurons in a pathway fire together, the more efficient that pathway gets so we get better at it. Uh, it can also be possible candidate for the way that long-term memory more generally works. Uh, the exact details of how it relates to memory still need to be worked out, but long-term potentiation is something very actively being studied that has a lot of promise for a lot of different areas in understanding neurology and psychology uh, and a lot of other areas of functioning in the brain. So to understand long-term potentiation, we first need to go through the basics of how neurons communicate with one another. So I don't want to go into too much detail. That can be covered by uh, in another video by a tutor, and that's something we could schedule a session to talk about in more depth. But for the purposes of long-term potentiation, here we have the end of one neuron, and here we have sort of the uh, beginning of another neuron. And you can see that they do not directly connect. So we're talking about a connection between neurons, but it's not really direct connection. There's a synapse or a gap in between them, and they have to communicate with one another through neurotransmitters. So the one, we have the neurotransmitters sort of stored up in these vesicles here. They get released, cross the gap, and then they link with the receptors in the other neuron here. Now, after the neurotransmitters have been released, in order for this next neuron to fire, there need to be enough of these receptors activated by the neurotransmitters in order for the next neuron to fire. Uh, that's, again, something that can be covered in a little bit more depth by another tutor. But a way to think about it is that we have these neurons down here that are sending a signal to this neuron up here. And the numbers down here represent the strength uh, of the signal that is sent. It's not quite how it works, but this kind of simplifies it in a way that might make it a little bit easier to understand. And this number up here in this other neuron represents the level of a signal that is needed in order for that neuron to fire. So if we want the signal to continue up past this neuron, if we want it to go on to the next one, there needs to be at least a signal of 15 that it's receiving for that neuron to fire. And you can see that each of these neurons down here has a signal strength of about 10. So if we have this neuron firing here by itself, it has a signal strength of 10. 10 does not pass the 15, so it's not enough for this neuron to fire. If we get both of these firing together, then this one is able to fire. But let's say that that happens again and again and again, especially if we're looking at this neuron here. These two tend to fire at the same time, so they have a connection that gets strengthened. And there's a couple of different ways that can happen. So one way is that the threshold that is necessary for this neuron uh, goes down. And that can happen by increasing the number of receptors it has. So it becomes much more sensitive to the neurotransmitters that are released by the neurons. And it can be very specific to which neuron it is, so that again, this isn't a very good representation, but it gets the general idea across. So this one still has a signal strength of 10, but now that is sufficient to cause this neuron to fire. So we can say that they have a stronger connection with one another. Again, not direct connection, but their synapses uh, are able to work together more efficiently so that the signal can go straight through. Another possibility is that this one keeps its threshold and this one starts to release more neurotransmitters. So the signal strength in a sense increases. So this one may have the same number of neurotransmitters, but there are, sorry, the same number of receptors, but there are more neurotransmitters that are able to bind to those receptors. So it may be able to overcome the threshold more easily. Uh, so now this one fires and it's enough on its own to cause the signal to continue on. Now there can be a combination of both. The threshold can decrease as well as the signal strength increasing. Uh, and it depends on a lot of different situations as to what may be actually happening. Um, depending on where in the brain it's happening, what the situations are, these are just some possibilities for how the synapses can become strengthened, how they can uh, become more strongly related to one another. But it's not always gonna happen in the exact same way. And this is something that will still be actively worked on uh, to try to understand what are the different ways that it happens and in what conditions and how does that actually play out in terms of neural processing. So this is the basics of long-term potentiation. Um, 
hopefully it has been helpful introduction. I know it's a fairly complicated topic to cover. So if it's something that you'd like to discuss in more detail uh, in talking about a specific situation, that's something I'd be happy to do with you if we were to schedule a session with one another. Uh, you can find a link to my profile uh, at Chegg down in the description and you can send me a message there. If I'm not available, there's plenty of other wonderful tutors who work in psychology and biology and other areas that uh, would deal with long-term potentiation. They'd be happy to schedule a time with you as well uh, and we can talk about it in more depth. But until we have that session, uh, hopefully this has been helpful and take care.